Hi, my name is Caroline Shabazz. I'm the founder of the Arts and Ideas School. Just to hop down the road here in Northeast Baltimore. When you break a rule in our school, you can get written up. Students can write up staff, and staff can write up students and other staff. As a founder of the school, I can be written up too, and have been. I've left my lunch out, I've been late to chore time, I've forgotten to sign in. But a couple of years ago, a 15-year-old student came to school and she went into the video room to uh, use a computer and she saw it was missing and when she inquired where it was, someone told her that Caroline had taken it home, so she went and got a grievance form and wrote me up for theft. When I found out, it was like a punch in the mouth. Theft is a serious issue. And I would have to go in front of a judicial committee made up of uh, kids from the ages of 5 to 13 who would decide if I had broken a rule, and if so, how would justice be restored? I was hurt. I was mad. Really? Isn't my job hard enough? Anyway, this kid is out to get me. She's making an example of me. She's making trouble for me. Or had I misjudged my right to take home school property, even if for important school business. Was I a hypocrite? I felt self-doubt. I felt embarrassed. And you know what? So what? So what? I felt bad. It was worth it to participate in an exhilarating process in which children and adults truly, equally, have a say in how things are run. In our school, children and adults make the rules together. Um, and in most schools, adults have to be the ones that are right. They have to have the answers. They're the ones with the authority. They're infallible. But I want to know why adults are afraid to model open-mindedness, flexibility, and most important, vulnerability. It turns out vulnerability is a pretty important life skill. I've heard it called intellectual humility, and actually companies like Google look for it when they hire people. It's the ability to fight for your idea, but when a better one comes across, you can say, oh, I'm wrong, let's go with your idea. Children and adults in our school, as I said, make the rules together. We create them together. You don't have to put an imaginary bubble in your mouth when you walk down the hall to keep quiet. You learn to keep your voice down because everyone agrees that not disturbing the peace is a good idea. And then you go to judicial committee and judicial committee discusses peace. Like, what is peace? Is your peace the same as my peace? Perspective taking, the ability to see something from someone else's point of view. Our kids learn it because they practice it. Children don't look to adults to resolve their squabbles. There's no concept of tattling. They look to their judicial committee to solve their problems. And, uh, enforce rules, and they themselves comprise the Judicial Committee. So the day of my case, the 15-year-old and I exchanged testimony, and Judicial Committee argued and discussed for a long time, and then they finally voted that the rule misuse of school property was most likely the one I might have broken. I pled not guilty. All those in favor of Caroline being guilty, raise your hand. One hand went up. All those in favor of Caroline being found not guilty, one hand went up. All those abstain, four hands went up. The abstainers wore thoughtful frowns. You could tell they were still thinking about the case. It wasn't black and white. Because there wasn't a majority of guilty, I was found not guilty. That one not guilty vote, <laughs> that one kid on my side, I was surprised. It was a nine-year-old boy. He was fairly new at our school, and I had written him up a lot. <laughs> he was noisy. He was rambunctious. He had disturbed my peace a lot. Uh, he was a little reckless. And I had written him up knowing and hoping that he would improve over time, but he didn't know that. Yet here I was on the other side of the table. Wasn't this the perfect opportunity to stick it to me, to get back at me? But he didn't because he had already served on both sides of the table. He knew JC was fair. It wasn't a personal affront to his autonomy or his character or even his reckless decisions. He knew JC was fair, so he didn't make it personal. He thought for himself, which I, the founder, we, the school, and me, the defendant, had trusted him to. 
Thank you.